Hello everyone, my name is Loco and it's time for another viewer match and what I got for you today is a Silver League match of Terran versus Zerg. Usually, besides maybe Bronze League, one of my absolute favorite leagues to cast games from just because usually the strategies are absolutely hilarious. Spawning here in the bottom left hand corner of Blackpink LE and playing with the blue Terran SCVs, we have none other than Nako Miku. Nako Miku and his opponent spawning in the opposite corner, already not sending his overlord out for scouting, cause he doesn't need it anyway, he's way too good for that. We have none other than Rit. Love that. Already, you know, just letting these two overlords hang about, you know? Why send them out for scouting and why try to obtain information where you can go for that hatchery first, blindly? Right? You don't really need to do any kind of scouting if your opponent is just simply gonna do whatever anyway, right? It's pretty tricky to figure out exactly what it is you are going up against. In the meantime, though, on the other side of the map, we do indeed see that barracks coming up as well as that single refinery. So, so far, you know, a hatchery first against a refinery into a barracks, pretty standard, although... Nakomiku is already adding on that second refinery. And I remember when I personally first got started in StarCraft 2, I would remember previous games, right? And I'd be like, hey, I seem to run, you know, really low on gas in that previous match. What if I just go ahead and get my gas faster this time around? And it's a brilliant decision making. Nakomiku immediately jumping into the second refinery. So he is never going to be low on gas throughout the remainder of this match. It kind of actually uh, depends on what he has got in store for us, though, because there's no denying that he's going to be able to get himself quite a bit of gas income here already. Going for the tech lab right now as well as the Ghost Academy behind the mineral line. Nako Miku, what do you have in store for us here today, buddy? What exactly do you plan on doing? We'll have to keep an eye out on exactly what this Ghost Academy is here for, but I, I've got the inkling he may very well be going for a couple of those stealth assassins right at the very beginning of this match. Now, Zerk, of course, he's not really uh, scouted anything just yet. Finally did send these overlords out on a bit of a mission across the map as well, but he's not going to be able to figure out that indeed there is no expansion taken here by the Terran player just yet. That does mean apparently that he's just simply going to go for the metabolic boost upgrade right away, which is Zerkling speed, and he's also following it up right now with two queens as well as additional gas there in the extractor. So we'll have to keep an eye out on exactly what it is the Zerg player wants to go for. But already, you know, this is looking pretty standard here from our Zerg player in red. The first ghost is now already on the production tab. We should probably give him a name because I can imagine there's not going to be all that many here in the earlier stages of it. There we have Jim. Jim the ghost. I know, they've got very generic names. It's just, you know, just kind of how it goes. Second barracks now also coming up. Maybe he's actually going to be making a lot of ghosts. I don't know. Jim is now going to be joined with Mark here in just about 30 seconds. I'm going to be running out of names probably in about another 30. So just keep that one in mind. I'll probably be forgetting anything. But the Overlord has arrived. And right now Rind knows about the fact that indeed there is no command center on the low ground just yet. Then again, it is Silver League, right? It doesn't really matter all too much what you scout. As long as there is no expansion taken, I guess you're just going to try to blindly prepare for anything. Another command center though will be produced here by Nakumiku, but Jim has already made its way across the map. The ghost cloaking, just about to finish up, it's not done just yet. Jim immediately gonna try and fight off against a Zerk queen, absolutely terrifying. He's gonna run back real quick just to make sure that he finishes up the cloaking. There we will indeed see the snipe queued up and the cloaking activated as well. And apparently he will then also be able to shoot that queen between the eyes. And Rint types, seriously? Rint got all of the time in the world. Mark is now also gonna join Jim here to try and deal a little bit of additional damage. No detection here available whatsoever for the Zerg player who did have time to type seriously but finally now also realized that he is indeed going to need a spore crawler. Lair will be started up right now in the main base. Overlord's already being taken care of as well. Luckily for Rindo, he made a couple of extra overlords anyway so he didn't really need all of those but finally he will be hitting a supply block. Jim did just run out of energy there as well, so that means that he is going to be decloaked. Zerkling's just about to spawn and Jim! 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 Oh man... Oh, he just, he just sunk into the ground. Did you see that? He just got absorbed by the creep. Mark apparently, though, has decided that he wants to go ahead and, you know, do a little bit more damage here for just a little while longer. But he's gonna eventually uncloak and get on out of there. Haha! <laughs> I see what you're looking at, Mark! 
Right? You've done the job. Now you go to, uh, <clears throat> all right, well, let's not, you know, let's just give Mark a moment over there, okay? Now, we do have a single Marine. Just <laughs> I love the resting spot, though, seriously. He really wants to check out that, that, dancif, uh, that dancing night elf girl. Is that a night elf girl? It probably is. It kind of does look like it. I guess. I guess this one is. Uh, I guess this one is from the Hyperion missions, right? But I've always assumed that it's the uh, the night elf dancing animation. Regardless, though, Zerklings are now moving across the map. But before they decide to go in there, they now morph a couple of their friends into Banelings as well. Now, there are four of them. It takes five to blow up a single supply depot. Another ghost has now also joined the battlefield, and Nako Miku is making the switch towards the factories. He does indeed now have another <laughs> Ghost Academy coming up here as well, so maybe he plans on having Mark deploy a couple of tactical nukes. Another uh, ghost will actually now be produced as well, but here come the Zerklings. That depot is actually already taking a little bit of damage. They could of course go for the tech lab as well. Tech lab will indeed go down. Both players already sufficiently flooding thousands of resources here each, but the SCVs should be capable of cleaning up these small groups of Zerklings. More and more links though. Now going across the map, they will be able to at the very least, you know, do a little bit of scouting and then once again get on out of there as well. SCV was gonna come up with the repair, but he just barely did not manage to get it. And I think that Nakumiku here plans on indeed, or, or he plans on indeed leaving the, the the safety of the main base and then just simply moving towards the natural expansion. Now, looking at the unit step, guys, I'm a little bit worried. Um, we we haven't we haven't seen uh, what went down there. All we know is that Mark, he's, he's probably, he's probably no longer with us. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Mark. I'm sorry, buddy. Another Ghost Academy, though, will be produced, bringing the total up to a, uh, a grand total of three. Zerklings and Banelings, though, not done with the aggression just yet. Centrifugal hooks just about halfway done. These SCVs are essentially just being sent down to die. Hopefully that will satisfy the blood god Rint, but Rint, he's not done just yet. He's even gonna blow some of those Banelings up on that command center, but eventually the command center turned out to just simply be bait, as it will be lifted up. Ghost as well as... <laughs> he just hit EMP on the, on the Banelings. I love it. EMP reduces... <laughs> I've probably done that as well, okay, once upon a time, but... Um, EMP reduces, uh, or removes, rather, the energy out of energy-based units. Um, <clears throat> there's no energy on Banelings. For those of you unfamiliar, there's no, uh... It looked cool, though. It looked really menacing, right? If we went for the intimidation factor, maybe the Zerk was looking at that and be like, Yo, wait a second. Anyway, the three musketeers are now moving across the map. I think we don't even want to bother naming them, because I don't think they are really... They're really meant to live particularly long. Oh, no. <laughs> See, they hurt that. They hurt... Oh, man. One of them is getting bullied here anyway. He pulled the shortest straw. He's gonna be the one in front leading the charge here. It almost is, uh, it almost looked like they hurt me there because they decided to turn back around. They are gonna go after those creep tumors. Are there any overseers available? One of them immediately going for the snipe there on that queen. Queen will be going down with a second round there as well. No overseers to be seen anywhere just yet. And actually, the musketeers are dealing quite a little bit of damage. Overseers are coming up right now in the main base, but there are no real zerklings here available just yet. One of them, though, will end up getting killed by the workers there. Oh, man. That stealth assassin made a whole lot of noise as well while dying. Apparently, that was not part of the training program. <laughs> They're like cloaked stealth assassins, and this is how they die. Ah, ah, like, you know, they, they get, they get, re <laughs> they get real loud when they die. Ghosts have two ways of dying. Either they scream, like I just beautifully portrayed as well, or they say something along the lines of, never say die, right? So that's real badass. Or you can go down, you know, sound absolutely, uh, sound absolutely terrible. Now, both of these players, though... This is the reason why people call StarCraft II a macro-based game, okay? Both of these players are flooding thousands and thousands of resources. Imagine, right? If either of them would have spent that money, they could just attack move across the map with the army that they created off of all of that income. Because right now, I mean, they've got so much in the bank. StarCraft II, like, StarCraft II is like the worst bank in history, okay? Most banks, what, the very least give you a little bit of benefits from, from you know, depositing your money there. I guess it's, uh, Oba, and here come the Zerklings and the Banelings, though, once again. They're gonna try and blow up on that siege tank. Nice, dude, you got that siege tank real good, but it's only about, uh, you know, two-thirds of the way dead or so. But regardless, StarCraft 2 does not reward you at all for having money in the bank. 
There's literally zero reason for doing that unless you are already maxed out. That siege tank, though, not repaired at all. It's gonna actually be pushed forward right here by these marines. <laughs> they have to try and push that tank because it's halfway damaged, you know? Like, it can no longer go into gear, although going downhill is not really an issue. Hellions, though, being sacrificed here for the greater good. They're doing a little bit of scouting, reporting back to the marines here, as well as that siege tank. And they're like, wait, hold up a second. We don't really want to meet that same fate here because apparently there are indeed a lot of Zerkings out as well. Luckily here, though, for the Terran player, Rint has already successfully gathered 5,000 resources in the bank within 10 minutes. It's pretty impressive, or I guess within 11 minutes, to be completely, uh, you know, to be a little bit more precise there. But uh, there are a lot of uh, a lot of drones out. The Ofra, or rather the, uh, the, the siege tanks here, are gonna siege up pretty far away from anything. They're not really doing anything, but the Zerklings will now be spotted here by these Marines. And now the splash damage there! Oh, man! Only a single marine there lives to tell the tale. The splash damage of these siege tanks just killed all of the friendly marines as well. Spire now coming up here for Rint. And I actually have to say, I really like that. Stimpak will be coming up here for the Terran player, but it's rather late. There's also, in general, not a whole lot of anti-air here available just yet for Nako Miku. The Zerklings, though, they are going to try and once again hit the surround there on those siege tanks. And... While they aren't quite attack moving yet, they're actually all trying to just simply go after a single one of them. All of them will live here to tell the tale, and that means that while one brave siege tank is gonna lead the charge, the other two there in the back are gonna be sieged up. He will eventually siege up as well, and Nako Miku will definitely be capable of cleaning up this base. Really nice back and forth though between these two players so far. It's really quite difficult to say who is currently ahead, I have to say, I really like this setup here for our Terran player. He's going to be capable of continuing onwards with the aggression. But the Zerklings, right? They are coming out in bigger numbers, but I'm a little bit... I'm a little bit more worried for the Muta switch. Right now, the Zerk player is capable of making Mutalisks. Now, there are a couple of units here that shoot up. There's 10 Marines in total. Two nukes actually also in the bank. Although Nakomiku does no longer... Uh, he's got no... Uh, he's got no real anti... Uh, or he's got no more uh, ghost personnel, I suppose, right? There's there's zero of them available just yet. Rint, once again, though, just simply waiting here on his uh, Zerklings to finish up. And here come the Muta switch, okay? Here comes the Muta. There, there's five of them on the production tab right now. Zerklings will be able to get, at the very least, one of those, one of those uh, siege tanks. But I'm a little bit worried here for this natural expansion, as Rint does really not have all too much here available to defend against all of those marines. Drones immediately evacuated on out of there. They're gonna head for the main base instead. They're running for the hills. They've been listening to Iron Maiden. They know exactly what it is they're going up against, as the Mutas will be capable of picking off that siege tank. But now there are only so many Marines available. Now, luckily here for Rindo, he got all of those Brutlings helping him out as well, as the hatchery died right there in the nick of time. And that may actually just barely give him the edge here to clean up this army. There were actually enough Marines there available to clean up those Mutas, I believe. But then the Brutlings came out as the hatchery died, and then all of a sudden, right, they ended up getting surrounded and killed. The Mutas are coming out in bigger and bigger numbers. Once again, though, both players have got massive banks, right? They've got a ton of resources already ready to go, but none of that is really being spent. Nakumiku is not really producing anything right now. A couple of barracks are coming up here. He's finally started up some more production there on those Marines, but there are really not a whole lot of... There's no missile turrets! He doesn't have an engineering bay. There's no missile turrets. Here come the Mutalisk. They're gonna once again engage against all of those Marines. Now, the Marines do have Stimpak, but they do not have any Medivax to heal them up. Right? There's also no upgrades on those Marines, so they are not gonna be nearly as powerful as you would otherwise expect them to be at this point in the game against those Mutas. Mutas will be able to clean up a lot of those Terran SCVs. There are still 13 of them mining minerals here in the main base, although really only one is mining anything here at any given moment. Um, there are more and more marines spawning, but I'm actually... Wait, are you kidding me? I did not really foresee a future in which Rint could obtain the victory. Now, he currently has 69 supply, and he's also producing three additional hatcheries. Couple of idle mutas here in the main base. I think it would be really nice for them to head on over to the other side of the map as well. Couple of cyclones are now coming out here too, and apparently we see indeed the upgrade here for the cyclones now also coming out here for... Uh, oh man, he really wants to kill his own marines in this game, man. That's a little silly. Um, we now also do indeed see the lock-on upgrade right there for the cyclones. But little known fact, right? Cyclones 
They are sort of like sentries in the way that they tickle air units. They don't really deal solar damage. It's really the marines that you're looking for right now. Now they eventually will be able to once again lock onto a couple of those mutalisks. But the mutas will be able to clear up every single last of these enter air units. And I'm pretty sure that somehow, some way. Rint has done it with thousands of resources in the bank. He's now apparently smelling blood rather than going for the guaranteed damage and trying to just simply kill, for example, his opponent's production. He's going to be going after the command center and Rint does become the victor in a pretty silly match here of Silver League Terran versus Zerk. I love it. Keep them coming, guys. If you have an awesome replay yourself as well, Go ahead and submit it to replays at loco.tv. Just a simple email address so you can attach your .sc2 replay file and I may very well end up casting your game in the future because I'm a big fan of these. It's so much fun to see the strategies evolve, right? Like strategies that, that are viable at Silver League, like for example, a ghost rush, they most definitely are not viable at the professional level of play. It's just so cool to see these wild, uh, wild, wild strategies coming into the daylight as well and just simply making an appearance in StarCraft 2. I really like it. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. If you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get a notification as soon as I upload more. And besides that, of course, do not forget to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Links are in the description. I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile all right, and I will see you in the next one.